Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and who the hell were the Ten Rings calling? Back in December 2021, Marvel dropped a huge setup in the Shang-Chi post credit scene that could have referred to anyone, from Galactus to that big Earth pimple that still no one is talking about. But when the Ten Rings showed up in the origin point of the Bengal in an episode of Ms. Marvel, the assumption was that they'd be tied to both quantum bands, the ancient Kree Empire, and that Carol Danvers' appearance in that Shang-Chi post credit scene meant that this would be resolved in the Marvels film. <laughs> nope. So if it wasn't the Kree and in the Marvels, one would assume it must be connected to the events of Avengers 5. That would make sense back in the time Shang-Chi was made because it was directed by Destin Daniel Cretton, who was for a time the assigned director to the fifth Avengers film. That's no longer the case. And now with Marvels dropping Jonathan Majors, we don't even know if it's going to be a Kang story. But then again, we have been getting rumors that Coleman Domingo might be considered for a recast for the character of Kang the Conqueror. So maybe Kang is still in the mix. Marvel has invested a lot in that character. But either way, the finale for What If Season 2 is established that there is a link between the God of Stories, Loki, and other Nexus beings like the Watcher, and I think within those wavelengths, Loki might be the one now hearing these rings as the God of Stories and the possible ranking Allfather of the MCU. He is at the center of everything within the Idrisil world's tree, and while the rings may have been intended for someone else originally, Loki is now the one hearing them in order to recruit characters like Shang-Chi and his growing multiversal lineup of Team Loki. So I'm going to break all of this down based on some exclusive insights sites about the origin of the quantum bands and the origin of the Ten Rings revealed to me by Iman Vellani. Okay, quick recap. The Ten Rings were weaponized by Wenwu for over a thousand years, and their origin was described in the opening narration of the film, but only apocryphally. The rings transferred to Shang-Chi and Wong brought him and Katie back to Kamartage in the post credit scene to investigate these rings. They don't match any artifacts from our codex. They're not vibranium. Chitauri? Not like any alien tech I've seen. How long did your dad have them before he gave them to you? About a thousand years. The thermal luminescence indicates they're older than that. By a lot. Wong says the first time Shang-Chi used these rings, they felt it in Kamartage, and then he zooms into his projection of the rings to reveal this pulsing beacon. A beacon. They're sending a message. A message to where? The next sighting of the Ten Rings in the MCU came in Ms. Marvel Episode 3 when the clandestines from the Nor Dimension found one of the quantum bands on a severed blue arm in a cave in British-occupied India in 1942. You heard what that man from the temple said. He said we would need to. And then an overhead shot of this cave shows the markings of the Ten Rings on the cave floor. Now, at the time, we all speculated that this was pointing to a shared Kree ancestry between the Bengals and the Ten Rings, and that perhaps the Ten Rings beacon was summoning the Kree, led by, we later learned, Darbin to come attack Earth to reclaim the Bengal. But then, when the Marvels came out, the Ten Rings and the Quantum Man's history never were fully explained. In fact, when I asked Iman Vellani about this, she claimed that she had no idea what Marvel was doing with that Ten Rings reference in Ms. Marvel. Marvel episode three. The, the Ten Rings thing in our show, I don't know who that whose idea that was. Mm. Why? <laughs> I mean, there, I'm sure someone is smart and plotting something to do with Shang-Chi, but I, I genuinely have no idea. And for what it's worth, season two of What If established that the Ten Rings, at least in another universe, really did fall to Earth from the sky, from space, and that they represented a kind of magic that Odin was somewhat familiar with, a magic that he feared being in the wrong hands, and a magic that seemed evenly matched with his Asgardian magic. So we're talking about a magic or a technology or both from a godly place and perhaps a wavelength that only, say, a time god nestled in an Asgardian-shaped tree of time might be attuned to. But Iman and I also talked about the fact that the Marvel's film did establish the Bengals as the quantum bands for Marvel Comics, which is a big deal, because in the comics, these were worn by Quasar, and they were created by Eon, who is the Marvel cosmic entity that oversees time. And that these bands were initially passed down through a lineage of titans, including Kronos, and then his son, Alars, and Alars was the father to Thanos and Eros, Harry Styles. And Iman Vellani confirmed to me exclusively that an earlier draft of the Marvel script revealed that the second quantum band's resting place on MB-418 was actually the grave site of Eon. I swear there was a version of our script where Darben actually name drops Eon, like this was his grave or something where they found it. Uh, Eon, the Marvel god figure who oversees time, whose statue we saw in the cosmic deity's chamber in Thor Love and Thunder, is dead and he was buried on this planet. That could be the explanation behind that weird golden marking that they dusted off from the site on MB-418. Oh, one-shot energy, huh? I think I'll try it. Whoa! <gasps> 
So what does one shot's focus shoe do? So, uh, one shot really is all you need. Begin your transformation with one shot energy today by going to oneshotenergy.com slash new rockstars for 10% off your order. Now, if this is still Marvel's plan, it opens up a ton of possibilities. It begins to answer some questions. If the bands were made by Eon, as he is in the comics, and if Eon is dead, that would explain why we've only ever seen cosmic beings in the MCU of a similar status like the Living Tribunal in the form of statues. The Living Tribunal was a statue head that was rotating in Thor Love and Thunder, and we saw the Living Tribunal as a severed statue head in The Void in Loki Season 1, Episode 5. So I believe that Marvel's God of Time and God of Law have been killed and they were killed not by gore the god butcher because you know taika watiti couldn't be bothered to show a god butcher butcher god but rather they've been killed by a form of kang maybe kang the conqueror or perhaps his future form kang prime that could be why the multiverse is such a mess the reason why wong and bruce and carol didn't recognize the substance of the ten rings and the reason bruce dates them to be extremely old is that these were actually engineered with future advanced tech that does not exist yet they were built by kang and sent back in time handed by kang to to various warriors, heroes, and champions to influence history. The rings to win Wu, to conquer Earth, the bands to Quasar, and Alars to conquer the stars. In fact, that man in the temple who told the clandestines to find one of the bands was probably a Kang variant who wanted that band to end up in the hands of Kamala Khan so that she could tear the fabric in space-time and set that band on a path to create an incursion to the X-Men universe in the Marvel's film. Both the rings and the bands could be made out of quantum ore. That was the mineral that that aim shovel was designed to dig for in the very first episode of Loki in the final scene. This was a future tool that Sylvie left for the TVA to find. And if you look closely at that screen, it says aim quantum ore shovel and it's from the early 21st century. Now we know that Kang has people stored all over time. Like one of the Kang variants is Pharaoh Ramatut who ruled over ancient Egypt, an empire that would predate Wen Wu. And the Loki series left Renslayer in the void with a pyramid and a sphinx from Pharaoh Ramatut's time in Egypt. So the beacon I don't think is alerting the Kree, it's alerting whatever Kang variant created these rings and it's pinging that Kang variant through time to let him know that Shang-Chi finally got his hands on them. Because remember, Wong said that Kamartaj didn't feel the rings until Shang-Chi used them. So it was less important that when Wu had them, it was really Shang-Chi's possession of them that was the trigger. Which means that in the original director, Destin Daniel Cretton's vision, Kang was waiting for Shang-Chi and Marvel Studios intends for Kang to be waiting for Kamala Khan. But there is a wrinkle in that plan. Look closely at the beacon. It's a flashing light that courses through several strands that twist horizontally and now that we've seen Loki season two, does this not look like the flow of time through the temporal loom? I think that beacon was alerting whatever Kang variant is occupying the throne at the time. When we watched Loki, it was He Remains. It's trying to alert whoever is in control of the flow of time. But as we know from watching Loki season two, the problem with that plan is now seated on that throne with the time stream rotated 90 degrees to become the form of Yggdrasil is Loki, god of stories. One of the few gods left in the MCU, at least gods that are actually doing anything. Yeah, intended shade thrown at Omnipotent City. So this this really sets up Loki as a much more important figure. Kang is selecting one lineup of Avengers, and I think pretty much every Marvel hero who has done something to break reality is going to be an Avengers Kang dynasty, including Shang-Chi, Doctor Strange, Peter Parker, Kamala Khan, Wanda Maximoff, Sylvie, and I hope a live action version of Killmonger Infinity from What If. The beacon is really meant for Kang, but Loki is intercepting this message, and I could see him gathering this group ahead of time to warn them that the Kang dynasty is on the move. They're about to burn as many realities out of time to build a weird, creepy compromise amongst all of them a patchwork of realities into a shared universe that they can have like joint custody over. So where are the 10 rings sending a message to? I guess Marvel is probably gonna say, well, not where, but when. And the message is meant for Kang who built these rings and these quantum bands who killed Eon and the Living Tribunal. But Loki, due to his recent ascent, is gonna hear that message first. So what do you think about this theory? Comment down below, support new rock stars by grabbing something from nerdriot.shop. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time, bye.